Does lifting weights seem intimidating to you? Maybe you know you need to get stronger, but you're not sure where to start because the whole idea of lifting weights just feels overwhelming and feels like too much. Well, on today's episode of the Exercise Health Podcast, we're going to lay out a simple plan that can help you overcome that once and for all. We're going to cue the intro song and then we're going to dive right into this conversation. Hey, welcome back, exercisers, to the Exercise is Health Podcast, brought to you by Exercise for Life Studios, where we believe that your health is your most valuable asset, and the single best thing that you can do to both boost and protect this asset is exercise. Specifically, exercise is geared towards building the health and function of your muscles. We are your hosts, Charlie. And Julie. And today, we are discussing this idea of where to start when lifting weights feels intimidating. Look, if you've been told that you need to get stronger or you need to start strengthening your muscles or you're just feeling that within your body, but the idea of going to the gym, lifting weights, doing the machines, you know, picking up dumbbells or something like that just feels overwhelming, feels intimidating, feels like something that you have no interest in doing, how in the world do you actually start and then make sure that you start in a way that you can keep coming back to it and keep doing it? That's exactly what we're going to be discussing today. Now, I think personally, um, as we go through this year and we continue to kind of do our podcast in this brand new format, eventually it needs to be acknowledged that we no longer have an intro song. We just have an introduction. So if you're listening and waiting for, waiting for wait, 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 where's the song he's talking about? There's no intro song anymore. Um, and eventually I will get the fact that we have changed the introduction and be able to deliver that more smoothly. But for right now, uh, we're just going to have to, you know, roll with the punches and just get better with it week by week. But that's, that's an adjunct. That's a sidebar. That doesn't have actually anything to do with today's topic. Uh, I just wanted to throw it out there and acknowledge that. Yeah, I actually really like our new intro. We heard back from a lot of our listeners, like the first week that we had our new intro, like, wow, I really love it. Anyways, we're working hard to just rebrand a little bit so that we're able to reach more and more audiences because we know that we have information that can change people's health and lives. So today we're talking about where to start when you're feeling intimidated by the gym. And I know, you know, Charlie, that it is a common thing to feel intimidated at the gym, and I think we we hear a lot of it from women, although it's not necessarily only for women, but today we are gonna be talking about a lot of examples that do pertain to women that we've worked with that have felt really intimidated by the gym. And I was actually just talking to one of my clients today, this morning, about how, at least in a woman's life, how, how the physical activity demands change. Mm. For example, like, we know to keep our muscles strong and to keep our bones strong and healthy and joints strong and healthy, we need to be physically active. And sometimes we are lucky enough, or it just is the fact of the matter, that you are really active with challenging things a lot of the day. Or you might be living in a lifestyle where you're not all that physically challenged a lot of the day. For example, my client this morning, she is about 60 years old and she was telling me, oh yeah, this morning I woke up and then, you know, it was a relaxing morning. So I had my shower and then I had tea and I sat with my husband and I read my book and then I turned on the news and, and then I came here, you know, to see me here at the studio. And I was telling her, you know, it's so funny because she was a stay at home mom. So there was a time in her life that she had a morning like mine where I woke up and the only time I have to exercise is right in the morning. So I exercised. And then I took my shower and I sat for about five minutes and then my son started crying. And then I carried around a 25 pound weight for about an hour while I got breakfast ready. I lifted up pots and pans. I picked up my crock pot because I had to get the meal ready for tonight since I was leaving for work in 30 minutes. And so it was a very physically demanding morning where like there was like more than an hour of time where I'm like, lugging around this giant weight called a toddler. <laughs> and then, you know, the, just the physical demands of, of that life. And so what I find a lot, especially in women, and this might pertain to men too, but I just don't work with as many men, but with women, we go from this very physically demanding life of carrying babies, like bearing babies, doing sports when we're young, um, you know, doing the heavy lifting around the house. And then as we get older, it's like nice to take a break, but then we just keep taking a break. And then there's very minimal physical, difficult challenges on our body. Mm -hmm. I mean, we hire a snow shoveler. We have someone, you know, 
do a lot of the heavy yard work. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but it's something to be acknowledged that, hey, your lifestyle is no longer having these challenges. And so now we need to bring in something else so that we can maintain muscle strength, muscle health, and bone health. Yeah, absolutely. And what I'm hearing is that eventually the day will come uh, where our kids are not going to be one to be sprinted up the stairs to bath time as if they're on a rocket ship. And so, <laughs> That's right. you know, so you're right. Like eventually, you know, the demands of our life change, right? And, and the thing about it is, is even when the demands of our life change, oftentimes the desires of our life don't change as much. Meaning even if, if there is a day that comes, well, if, I'm guessing if eventually there will be a day that comes. My son's not going to be 30 years old wanting me to sprint him up the stairs, you know, to his bath in the evening, but I may still want to have the, like, desire the ability to be able to do that, you know, with his kids or with our daughter's kids or, you know, something like that, right? So even when the demands of our life have changed, the desires of our, of our life may not change uh, as much as the, as the demands do. And so why that's important is because if the demands of your life change, but the desires of your life don't change as much or to as great of a degree, then you need to find a way to supplement that demand that was once on your body. A lot of times we think about the demands on our body as something that can be very taxing and very stressful and everything like that. But the reality is, is that challenge, that consistent challenge to our body, that consistent demand on our body actually can help us quite a bit, you know, physically from a strength perspective, from a mobility perspective, from an overall function perspective. And so then the question becomes, okay, when we reach this point in our life where our day-to-day -day demands uh, are not requiring us to do what we once were physically, but we still desire to have the ability to go and, and do the things we, we've always been able to do or to be able to do different things, how do we go about doing that? And a lot of times, you know, it does come down to our physical strength. But that idea of going and lifting weights, of hopping on a machine, of, you know, picking up some dumbbells or some bands at home, it can feel and it does feel very intimidating and very overwhelming to a lot of people. Uh, and so we just try to kind of push that off. We kind of, you know, sweep it under the rug is like, oh, you know, I, I'm not losing strength as quickly as it, as it seems like I am, or, you know, I'm going to be able to maintain this for the next 10, 15, 20 years, no problem. And what so many people don't realize is how steep that slope gets once you start to, you know, cross over a, a certain point, right? It's like, you know, for the first say quarter of our life, it's like every day we're just naturally getting better, right? right. Like, let's say the first like 25, 30 years, it's just like every day we're just naturally getting better. And then maybe we have like 25, 30 years where we're just kind of like maintaining a little bit and you know, we have to do some stuff to maintain. And then it's like, okay, well, if I just keep doing that little bit to maintain, but we don't realize is how fast our bodies regress once we hit either a certain biological age or a chronological age um, or our body undergoes like enough stress and our body's just like no more, right? And, and so many people, this is where you and I often uh, step in, with, in on people's journeys is when they realize I'm going downhill a lot faster than I thought I would because I thought maybe I had another like five, eight, ten years of just being able to kind of maintain doing what I was doing before and I'm realizing, wow. I need to have my strength not only like kept, but actually like back to how it was. And I need it a lot faster than I thought. Absolutely, Charlie. And a really good example of this is one of my clients. She, well, she, she was my client and we took a break. And then we had the COVID pandemic where we were all stay home. So she works from her computer. So she started working. She was in the office and then she went to working at home. And she said that after a few weeks of being at home, initially she was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing work. I don't have to get ready. I don't have to, you know, get myself out of the house. This is great. And after a few weeks of doing that, she was like, I don't know why, but I am like physically going downhill. She's mid to late fifties. And she said, oh, I, I felt like I couldn't get up and down off the ground as easily. And then, so there were many things. And I asked her, well, what do you normally do when you go to the office? Well, she has to walk a really long, um, parking lot. She had to use the stairs. She had to um, carry things from, you know, workstation to workstation. And these were all important physical things that 
We didn't realize that was like kind of keeping her going until she no longer had to do that. I mean, she would wake up, stay in her pajamas, maybe put on a nice blouse and have her coffee and start getting to work. All that physical demand from her day was gone, which was emotionally really nice, but physically her body really needed that. And the good thing though, is it doesn't take very long for you to start feeling better mm. once you start exercising. That is like the amazing part about exercise because I know exercise for a lot of people seems intimidating, seems like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so much work. And yes, strength and conditioning takes time to build. But the feeling of I'm feeling stronger, I'm feeling like I'm getting better, that always kicks in mm -hmm. very soon after mm -hmm. you start. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're like, yeah, I am intimidated about getting started, but I want to get started, that's the, uh, that's the uh, golden nugget is that, hey, if you get started, you're going to start feeling much better, much stronger, more prepared for your life very soon after you start moving. So what can be done about this, right? Like we're, we're not just kind of like throwing out a problem. We actually want to provide a very specific solution. And the solution that we want to provide is one of a system that needs to be followed because what we find time and again uh, with clients and even with ourselves is that when we can follow a very specific system with our exercise uh, that, ha that has principles uh, and that has certain tactics that we're able to implement day after day, workout after workout, uh, that consistency with our exercise and ultimately the consistency with our, the health and the strength and the function of our body that's what remains intact. And so, and, and we're able to, um, to progress that continuously as well. So the system really is what we wanna highlight for you today. And it's one that you're able to follow on a regular basis, keeping you safe while you're exercising, but also making sure that you are getting the results of strengthening your muscles and everything like that. We find that when people have a system to follow, like what we're gonna lay out today, it becomes much less intimidating when you go to the gym, when you try to work out on your own or you know, in a class or anything like that because you have these principles in mind that will guide you along the way. So the first thing I want you guys to remember is that we have to be thinking total body. We have to keep every part of our body strong unless you want that area to be weak because once you become a certain age, there's many different ages that are thrown out there. I think the most common one is 35 and over. If you're not doing something to keep what you have, you're going to naturally lose it. Like what Charlie was saying is that when you're young, you just naturally get better every day. Like my kids, they're one and three. And every day, they're stronger. They're smarter. They're more coordinated. They've got more words. They don't, the they don't have to work that much to do that because that's naturally how their body is functioning. But there becomes an age where we naturally start the decline. And a lot of us have maybe started moving by that time, maybe not. But we can do things to slow the decline, level out the decline, or reverse the decline. And the first thing we have to be doing is thinking total body because we don't want to leave anything out. And I know if you have thought about exercising and you're intimidated by weights, it's likely that you're doing something and that something is probably some kind of cardio-esque thing like walking or maybe doing the elliptical at the gym. And that is really great. You have some momentum going. But now we need to think beyond the legs. We need to think beyond what are my feet and hips doing. We need to be thinking of multiple motions in the hips, your core, all the motions that your core does, your shoulders, your elbows, your spine, all the areas of your body really need to stay strong because they are kind of like the chain links in a strong chain and every part of that chain needs to be strong. Otherwise, other areas or that area will start to become symptomatic or achy and that is something we really want to avoid as you age because those are things that take people away from exercise. So the more that we can keep every link, every area, all the muscle groups, all the joint motions strong, the more that we're going to be able to benefit from exercise because every area is more balanced. Yeah, Julia, that's a really great point that you bring up as far as like what people think they're doing in the gym versus what they need to be doing. And what, what I want to highlight about and just piggyback off of what you said with the total body idea is so often people say, okay, yeah, I'm going to start lifting weights. And they'll think, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, lift my arms and maybe I'll do some crunches and stuff like that. And we'll be like, okay, but what about strengthening the muscles of, you know, your hips and your knees? And they'll be like, well, I, I'll go walking or, you know, I'll, I'll do some stairs or, you know, I'll do the elliptical. It's like, okay, yes, you are using your legs to do those activities. And, you know, maybe you're a bu uh, building the aerobic capacity or you're building, you know, the conditioning, the physical overall fitness 
of your legs in that regard, but we're talking about strengthening them. And so even if you are one to ride your bike or do a spin class um, or you know you go for walks or everything like that, you still need to be adding in specific strengthening exercises for your lower body. And so that's where this idea of total body comes into play. It's not just like, okay, you're going to do your curls and some overhead presses um, and, you know, maybe some, you know, single arm rows or whatever, and then you're going to go walking. It's like, no, no, your entire body needs to be strengthened because I love what you said and I'm going to paraphrase it and I think I'm going to have it a little bit backwards, but the overall idea will be there, which is like, hey, you need to be strengthening every single area of your body that you don't want to get weaker. Yes. Right? And so yes. it's like, okay, unless there's an area of your body that you're like, yeah, eh, it, it's okay if my low back gets weak. Oh, no, no, it, it's okay if, like, my legs get weak. Oh, it's okay if my neck gets weak. And then it's like, or my hands. You know, you like, you don't realize how, how crucial these different areas are that we don't think about as far as, you know, like a, a chest press or, you know, something like that. But it's like, no, no, all these other little areas of your body, unless there's an area that you're like, yeah, no, I actually want that area weaker, you need to be doing strength training for it. You know, Charlie, as you're saying that, I'm thinking of when we get injured. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a system to, like, approach, how am I going to keep this area strong? Then it's like, well, I have knees that are, bother me. So I'm, I'm going to do exercises, but not ones for my mm. knees. And so it almost feeds into the issue of like, hey, you have a knee problem or your knees are bothering you and now you're also deciding to leave that out of your strength training plan. And I think that leads us perfectly to our step number two in this in this system to follow, whereas number one, think total body. Number two, when you weight train, stay where it feels good. Don't strength train where it feels symptomatic or painful or funky or zingy or whatever symptoms you feel. And you might have listened to that and like, well, Julie, you just like, um, you know, spoke in a circle because you said, hey, if you have a knee issue, then keep working your knees. But my ha knees have an issue and now you're saying I need to work my knees. Yes, you do need to work your knees. Did that make sense? Yeah. Okay. We need to work the area, every area and find the range that is asymptomatic. So Sometimes you might be doing an exercise and the way the instructor is doing it or the way you did it last year doesn't work for you today. Because let's say you're doing a squat and you're like, hey, when I get about three quarters of the way down in my squat, my knee starts to click or feel weird. Or I'm just not sure about my knee there. It feels weird. Well, great. You still should do your squats. Just stay in the range that's asymptomatic. So go into your squat and stay just shy of that weird thingy thing you're feeling and then come back up. Because here's the thing, the only way that your joints get better, the only way that your muscles get better is by applying a stimulus. So applying, um, applying challenge to them, doing your squats, staying in the range that you feel good, and then the only opportunity for you to get more range is to build strength in the range that you do have. And so tomorrow, or the next day, or in three weeks, or in four months, you may be able to go lower in your squat, but you won't, you will definitely not be able to go lower in your squat if you're not training the squat part that you do have. Yeah, that's a really good point, Julie. And I think a lot of times when people hear this idea of like, well, you know, just stay within the range where it feels good, they think, well, none of it, none of it feels good. Not, none of it at all feels good. And, and I gotta be honest, like, I've been working with people, um, you know, at least in the, in the way that we currently work with people for over a decade now. And it, it Really, it only seems like something just like none of it ever feels good when there's been some kind of like new injury to it, right? Meaning like like you really tweaked your knee or you like really tweaked your back and it's just and it's right there. But that's a very acute thing, okay? What we're talking about is like when when somebody has arthritis or when somebody has, you know, just some you know aches and pains going on there's usually a specific part when they're trying to move that joint where it's like okay no this is way worse than than all the other you know all the other parts uh you know i, I can lift my arm to here but above that like it really hurts for example right however um a lot of times when it's like oh i can only lift my arm to here and then above that then then it really hurts and it's like okay well that means i can't do you know anything with it what we're saying is Find that part of the range of motion where you can move and there is 
it's in no symptoms or as close to no symptoms for you as possible and just stay within that part of the motion. And in your mind, your mind's going to be playing a trick on you and it's going to be saying, well, you're not doing much motion, so that means there's no benefit, so that means you should just stop. And the reality is, is the whether or not there's any motion at all doesn't really matter. That That d- is not indicative of the benefit that you're going to get from a strength perspective, which, by the way, is why we're why we are we're guiding you through this, guiding you to to go down this route, is to help you build your strength in a safe and efficient manner. Um, if if what your mind was saying was true, then there wouldn't be any benefit to doing isometric exercises, which are exercises specifically where you don't move. So the whole idea is just find the part that you can do. Just stick with what you can do. Stay within what you can do. And when you build the strength and you build the function, you build the integrity of your body within the part of the range of motion that you can do, and that is the either completely symptom-free or is the lowest part of like the, the symptomatic area that there is for you, then all of a sudden, the strength and the health and the function of your body improves, and more times than not, you start to find that you can do more range of motion while having it be either completely symptom free or very, very low on that symptom scale. So I just want to throw that out there because, you know, people's, people's minds, they, they play tricks on them. They play tricks on us. Um, and it's all designed to try to keep you safe. But uh, at, the, at the end of the day, we're trying to help you strengthen your body and do so in a very safe manner. And there are going to be things that your mind tells you because it, it, thinks there's some kind of threat when there actually isn't a threat. You just need to play within the range that you can and you will see your health, your strength, your function improve, and then your motion improve as as a result. You know, this is a big part of our conversation with all clients, whether you're really active, whether you're brand new and you're just thinking about becoming active, whether you're 30 or you're 50 or you're 70, because a lot of people almost our, our bodies are designed to like take a lot of stress and because of that I think everyone over the age of 30 has some kind of like chronic thing that the good news is that we have this thing called exercise that we can start managing that so anyways staying in the range where it feels good um, will help you build your strength for all areas of your body and it is completely normal to have areas that you have to really problem-solve with so don't feel like that is a reason why you should stop exercising altogether the last the last tip we want to give you today and the last piece of this system is to move slowly when you exercise. I was just talking to a client this morning and she was like, well, yeah, I know. I can't believe I, I got injured when I was at the gym because I was lifting really light weights. Like it was only my third workout back in a long time and I was lifting really light weights. And I told her, well, one of the biggest issues is not the amount of weight that you're lifting, but it's how you're lifting it. A lot of people go way too far in their range because they move quickly. Like they pick up weights and they start flinging them because that's what everyone else is doing. And again, what Charlie was telling us, like our minds like to play tricks on us, but we don't like to be challenged. Our bodies Mm -hmm. are made for survival, not to tolerate challenges. And so it takes a lot of effort to slow down because it makes the exercise harder. But when you move slowly, it keeps you safer. It allows you to stop when you need to stop. And it also allows you to have that time where you can listen to your body. A lot of times we're moving so fast, we can't even listen to our body because... Oh. Oh, that's interesting. That's weird. We can't even listen to our body because we're moving so dang quick. We're missing all the signs and signals. You have to slow it down, it'll keep you safer, and it'll be much more effective for your muscles. This moving slowly piece, it's so overlooked, it's so overrated, but it is such a difference maker when you start to do it consistently. Everybody thinks that the goal of lifting the weight is, as the name would describe, to lift the weight. In other words, to see the weight move up and down in space. And the truth of the matter is, that is not correct. The goal of the lift, of lifting weights is to challenge your body. And, and the physics are such that the faster you move the weight, the less of the weight is going to actually be challenging your body. You get to rocket launch it at one part of the range of motion and let its momentum carry it throughout the rest of the range of motion. And so what you want to do to the best of your ability is fight the, the desire to try to get one more rep and instead lean into the desire or rather the the lean into the challenge that your body is experiencing lean into the fatigue 
try to change in your mind that be the thing that you are seeking out, that be the thing that you are desiring, not the external outcome of the weight moving up and down, but the internal feeling of squeezing, challenging, connecting with your muscles. And when you can make that shift in your mind and when you can implement that shift consistently within your workouts, that's when you'll notice a huge difference to how your body feels and how your body responds with your exercise. And that's when you can start to go to the gym. And it doesn't matter whether you're working out on your own or, I mean, even working out at home, uh, doing a group class or whatever, you implement those principles. And now it's like, okay, it doesn't really matter what the external goal is, what the workout of the day is, what we're being told, you know, the choreography by the instructor, everything like that. Because I'm keeping these principles in mind and because I know where my focus needs to be with exercise and how my strength and health will actually improve with the exercise, now I can execute on that. And that's when you start to leave your workouts feeling healthier, feeling like you're functioning better, actually feeling stronger, more energized from your workouts instead of feeling depleted, broken down, feeling like, oh, I'm going to need to take at least two days off to recover because tomorrow I'm going to be far too sore to work out. Now, when you follow this system of one, think total body, two, stay where it feels good, and three, moving slowly, this brings about, in my opinion, and the people that I've taught this to, which is a handful, lots and lots of my clients, is that you have, it builds your confidence in what your exercise is doing for you. Because I don't know about you, but we're busy. Everyone's busy. We got important things. We got kids. We got grandkids. We got families. We got trips. We have work. We have things that are important. And not a lot of us go to the gym because it's like our hobby. Right? Uh -huh. That's true. I mean, some of us are like athletes and we love it. And we do it, you know, for the fun. But a lot of us are there to get something done, right? To improve our health. And when we can figure out, and, uh, and specifically this, this system that we've just laid out for you, when we can apply something and have confidence, like, hey, I know when I go to the gym, if I think that, 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 I am going to be improving my health, I'm going to really limit my risk for injury, I'm going to really promote the ability for me to build my health, and I know I'm going to be working on the strength and function of my body. That is the most exciting thing, because you have this confidence in that exercise piece, whereas I found that when we go to the gym and pick a random class, or you go to you know YouTube and you pick a random person to follow, and do their workout, there's not really that confidence. You don't know what principles they're going to be following and asking you to do. You don't know what's gonna be put on your body that day, but if you approach any workout and you say, okay, I'm gonna think total body, I'm gonna stay where it feels good, and I'm gonna move slowly, this will really transform your workouts into this haphazard, maybe it helps, maybe it hurts type of a thing, to now I know when I show up and I do these things, I'm going to be leaving a better, stronger person. Exactly. Now, Julia, how can people go about doing this consistently with your guidance specifically? Yeah, absolutely. So I actually just released a free mini series called Perfectly Fit for 50 Plus. Mm -hmm. um, it is targeted towards women, although men can join it too if you feel like we're talking to you right now. Um, and what it is is this three simple workouts. We're going to be working on strength, fun uh, strength balance, and mobility is what a lot of women feel like they start to lose as they go past the age of 50. And we're doing it all in, in the comfort of your own home with minimal equipment. So I actually just released this program. It's, I'm very excited about it. And we have, we've had a handful of people start in on it and they are just loving it. I actually made it for a brand new exerciser too. So if you've never exercised, you have no need to be intimidated. All you would need to do is go to a uh, at www. So it's one of the programs within yeah. our Exercise for Life Studios uh, website. So if you go to www.exerciseforlifestudios.com, there'll be a tab that says programs. You just click on that. And you scroll down, you'll see the the, um, the button that says perfectly fit for women 50 plus. You can click there and it'll take you right to the page where you can sign up for it. Yes. And all you have to do is give me your email so that I can send it to you. Yep. And you'll have like a little portal where every day you'll get one more workout. Mm -hmm. And the best part is I've had women that are brand new that have tried this. And they're like, oh, I love it. It's like the perfect amount of intensity. I've also had women that have exercised for quite a long time try it. And they love that I'm kind of, it's almost like we're creating some tunnel vision. Like, hey, let's get really goal specific with this exercise. Because again, we have to be use, being strategic. We need to be strategic with our time and make sure that it's potent mm -hmm. um, as we're doing it. And then I've also had a handful of women be like, 
oh my goodness, half of those exercises I've never done and I can't believe they were um, something I really need to work on. Mm. So um, I'd love for you to sign up and try it out. It's completely free. It's three workouts. All you have to do is go to our website, www.exerciseforlifestudios.com, click on the Programs tab, and if you scroll down, it's a completely free little mini-series that you'll see that's called Perfectly Fit for Women 50 Plus. Exactly, and we'll put that link right in the show notes. And if you are watching this on YouTube, we will put it in uh, the description below this video as well. So just scroll down and click on that to get immediate access to those three free workouts. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that knows they need to be doing strengthening exercises, but the whole process of trying to go to the gym or work out on their own at home it feels intimidating to them and they really don't know where to get started. Share this episode with them, whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watching us on YouTube, so they can understand these simple systems and the steps that they can follow to help them build their strength through exercising consistently. And while you're online, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It helps people find our podcast when they're looking for information on exercise and they're looking for information on health. So if you found value in this conversation today, let us know by leaving us that five-star rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week, and we'll talk with you all next week.